Praise Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rochaha Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel. Um, just uh, just wanted to touch on a topic um, that I've been meditating on, Lord willing, and be edifying um, to the elect, um, going in on on uh, applying the truth to your advantage, all right? Um, applying the truth to your advantage, you know, because um, when you read the scriptures, you know, you meditate on it, okay, uh, you become that new creature in Yahweh Shai, you know, that, that uh, comes with you starting to actually, you know, read and then not just being a, a hearer, okay, or if you listen in the videos or, you know, so on and so forth, but actually a, a doer, which means, you know, putting it into action, okay, using it, applying it, all right? And a lot of things that the scripture speaks about, you know, especially, you know, in the book of Sirach, all right, the book of Ecclesiastes, all right, the book of um, uh, Proverbs, Psalms, okay, a lot of those, uh, um, a lot of those scriptures and precepts are are things that could be used to um you know you can be used for your advantage you know in your walk in this truth while we're in this world all right you know uh, uh um we speak you know started you know speaking about the the prophets you know the teachers we uh you know we teach these things but we also could use these things in our and should be using these things in our own uh walk all right and, and the number one thing that i was uh meditating on is you know really your um your 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 tongue all right the how you how you give an answer all right knowing when to give an answer knowing what type of answer to give all right and knowing when not to speak when not to you know uh, um you know uh, as the scripture says revile all right because those things when you have that knowledge and you apply it it actually you know uh, benefits your life all right it benefits your day to day. Okay, so now this is uh scripture right here in the book of Sirach, chapter 37, um, verse 19. It says, There is one that is wise and teaches many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. And why and, and how could that be? Is because you may know the scriptures and you may be able to, you know, um break them down properly and, and give and give the sense, but if you are not applying those same scriptures to your own life then you're not being profitable unto yourself okay if you are telling somebody or teaching you know somebody that you know uh, uh it's better to be a hearer and it's like it's better to uh, uh you know hear and, and not give the sacrifice of fools right was that ecclesiastes five and one but yet whenever there's a whenever there's a, a time or opportunity for you to be a hearer and 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 not just somebody that just you know runs off at the mouth, you don't do so, then you're not being profitable unto yourself. Okay, or for or if, you know the scripture speaks about um you know being uh hasty to be angry, you know, we teach we know that people should you know brothers and sisters in the truth should be temperament, but yet you're not able to control your own self, then you're not being profitable. All right. You're not profiting your own self, although you're able to teach people these things. You also got to apply it to your own walk. OK, so uh, like I said, the, the, the thing I was meditating on was um, the tongue. All right. Because as the scripture says that the tongue in the tongue is the, is the power of uh, life and death. Let's get that. OK, this is the book of uh, Proverbs. Let me um, get to it. Um. The book of Proverbs, chapter, eighteen, verse twenty-one. It says, "Death and life is a uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof." Okay, so death and life is in the power of the tongue. James spoke about how the tongue may be a small member. Yet, you know, it's it's uh it's very uh, powerful, you know. So you having the ability to speak. Remember, hey, the Lord only gave that to, to man, to mankind. 
the ability to actually um let's get that in the book of Sirach 17 um Sirach 17 I start at verse 5 it says they received the use speaking about man um it says they received the use of the five operations of the Lord and in the sixth place he imparted them understanding right now all men have a a level of understanding okay now we that's in the truth we have the highest level of understanding which is a, a blessing okay something that you should be grateful for that the most high yahweh bashim yahweh shai giving you the eyes to see and the ears to hear and you and, and and the ability to understand his counsel his way so we are you know are on the highest plateau of understanding okay the ones of us that are in the uh the the truth of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says, and in and in the seventh speech, an interpreter of the cognitations thereof. Okay, and when you go into the definition of the word cognitations, it means the actions of thinking deeply about something. All right, contemplation, consideration, mulling over, meditation, study, deliberation, reflection, pondering, okay, speculation, so on and so forth. All right, these are all synonyms to cognitation. And the tongue, the ability to speak, is the actual interpreter. So it, it, it uh, interprets what you are really, you know, thinking about, what you're really meditating on, all right? What you're really mulling over, what you're really deliberating on. And that's why uh, Yahweh Shai spoke about that it, it, it's not what goes into a man's uh, mouth that defileth him, but it's what comes out of his his, his uh, uh, mouth that defileth him, all right? And that he was um, speaking on in context because you got a lot of, uh, you know, Christianity, you know, they like to use that to say, oh, see, you can eat anything because you can't def be defiled. But Yahweh Shai, when you actually go into it, Salakia, when you actually go into it, he was, he was speaking about a custom that uh, the Pharisees and, and, and the, the, the Jews, all right, especially the, the Pharisees, all right, they were um, doing, which they basically said that if you don't wash your hands before you eat, then you're defiling your body, you know, and because the, the Lord, Lord's disciples didn't wash their hands, wasn't uh, washing their hands before they eat. But Yahweh was letting them know that, look, what you actually thinking about, let me get it, what you actually think about, all right, what actually comes out of your mouth defiles you. Um, let's see, defileth. Uh, belly. Um, yep. Um, Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. It says, I'm start at um, 10. It says, and he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand. All right. That's the, that's the sixth, <laughs> the sixth sense, so to speak, that the most high gave unto, unto a man was the ability to understand. All right. And like I said, everybody, um, has different levels of understanding, which you have these heathens, they're considered beasts because their level, their level of understanding is, is as, you know, it's a very low level. All right. But the, the ones of us that's in this truth, we have a high level of understanding. So it says verse 11, it says, and not that, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of his mouth, this defileth the man. And, and where does that you know come from? That comes from starts with your cognitation, all right, your 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 meditation, your deep thought, and then what you are deeply thinking about. Your tongue, your mouth interprets it, and then you know brings it out. So I'm gonna jump down. Um, Salakia. Um, yep, I'm gonna jump down to verse uh, 18. It says, but those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart, the mind, and they defile a man. For out of the heart, the mind, proceed evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. All right. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Okay. And that was the that was the, the lesson that Yahweh Shai was uh, giving. Okay, so now with knowing that, because, you know, a lot of, you know, um, a lot of people in the world, which I've been seeing as of late, especially all women, which is something that, 
they've been dealing with, okay, uh, going back to Eve, okay, on the left-hand side, uh, uh, these ideologies, which they, they call it now, you know, uh, affirmations or manifestations, you know, speaking things into existence, you know, speaking to the, they speak into the universe and, and, you know, uh, having the ability in your own power to bring forth whatever you uh, manifest or bring forth whatever you desire or speak. Now, on the left-hand side, or if that idea, I should say, is true, and that's scriptural, okay? Which is why the scripture says that the, po the power of life and death is in, the, is, uh, um, is in the tongue. However, when they do that, on the left-hand side, if they don't give the honor and the recognition to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, okay, the, the creator, then ultimately what they're doing with those whole manifestations and affirmations is um, worshiping the creature because they're looking at, though, the universe. Well, who created the universe? All right. Oh, speaking to the universe and the universe will will manifest to me. That's you worshiping the creature. Are you saying, oh, I have power to manifest my own destiny? That's you worshiping the creature. You see? But. And, and ultimately, what is that going to lead to? That's going to lead to your destruction because you're not serving and you're not acknowledging the creator. Okay? You're not acknowledging the creator when you say those things. But for us who has the higher higher understanding, okay, the understanding through the spirit uh, and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we also can manifest things with our tongue, with our speech. Hey, that's why the scriptures, the Lord said it himself, that the words that I speak, they are life, okay? And that's why he said, he that believeth on me as the scripture I have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Because out of your belly, which the Lord is speaking uh, metaphorically, is speaking about the things that come out of you, all right? And you're really your spirit, your mind, which the tongue interprets that, okay? So that's why, uh, let's get another scripture here in the book of, um, going back to Sirach, Chapter 37. So Rock 37. I'm going to start at um, 15. And I'm going to jump. It says, above all this, pray to the most high that he will direct thy, thy way in truth. Okay. So everything we're supposed to acknowledge. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's what it says in, in the book of Proverbs. All right. In, in all thy ways, acknowledge the Lord, man. So even when we, you know, uh, uh, speak, that's why the scriptures also says that it's, um, you know, I'm so lucky. I know I'm jumping, but, you know, just bear with me through the spirit. Uh, follow me through the spirit. Uh, Proverb, uh, James, all right, uh, the book of James, chapter 1, verse uh, 19. It says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the uh, righteousness of the most high. Okay? Because when you are slow to speak and you're quick to hear, going back to Ecclesiastes 5, okay? You are able to understand the more you hear, because that's why the Lord gave you ears, and two ears, one mouth, right? The more you hear, the more you are able to understand. And the more you're able to understand, the better response or answer you are able to give. So if you are not quick to hear, but if you're rather quick to speak, then you're not going to be able to understand exactly the whole the whole matter. Okay, that's why it also says in the book of Sirach that um, hear the whole uh, the whole matter before you give an answer. Okay, let's go back now to um, where is it at? Uh, book of Sirach thirty seven. Verse 18, it says, Four manners of things appear, good and evil, life and death. Because that's what basically, you know, that's what this 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 condition of the battle that we're in, or you know, on the earth in this age right now is all about. It's about either good or evil, okay, uh, a life or death. So we being in this truth, well, we know what we are seeking for. And we know the, the, the path to get it because the Heavenly Father, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem, the Holy Spirit, Racha HaKodash, has directed us and in, in opened our, our understanding to the path of good in life. And 
and directed our our way, you know, away from evil and death. But it says this. It says, but the tongue ruleth over them continually. All right, let's read that again. It says, for many of for 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 Salakia, four manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death. But the tongue ruleth them continuously. Continuously. Let me read that. And um, another uh, translation. This is um, as I was reading. What was it? Where is it? Eight nineteen. Okay, it says. Four turns of fortune appear, good and evil, life and death. And it is the tongue that continually rules rules them. You see? Because once again, there is power of life and death in the tongue. Okay, in the, in the book of Proverbs, it says that as a man thinketh, so is he. So in this truth, you should apply that to your walk. Okay, instead of you know, uh, uh, having those negative thoughts, which, you know, Satan, that's the way that he tries to sift you. He put those negative thoughts into your mind, even the afflictions that we go through. Okay. Paul spoke about rejoicing in your affliction, because if you are in the spirit of, of, of the, the, the fruits of the spirit are within you, even in the midst of your affliction, you won't lose hope. Okay. And then you will look at it as a, as a, actually a, a learning lesson. Because those afflictions, let's get it, in the book of Proverbs, uh, not Proverbs, uh, Romans 5, Romans chapter 5, damn it, Romans 5 verse uh, 3, it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation, and knowing that tribulation worketh patience, see, because when you're going through the tribulation, and you are in the right spirit, right? And you haven't, and the Most High is guiding you, okay, through His Son, through the Holy Spirit. Then, even in your affliction, you can rejoice, you can glory, because you know that, hey, what I'm going through is actually going to increase, you know, uh, me spiritually. So it says it, it increases your work of patience, your endurance, your ability to endure, you know, uh, the bad times. All right, evil, you know, the afflictions, things of that nature. All right, it says, in knowing that tribulation work with patience and patience experience. Because when you go, when you endure these things, it builds your it builds your character because now you experienced these tribulations and you uh and you endured it. So it builds your your uh, character because now you have the experience of going through these things, and it says what? And in, in, in experience hope. So now that you have experienced it, it built your character. Now it actually builds your hope, knowing that hey, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know he uh, uh, um, he put me through this you know trial, but I endured it, and you know I wasn't I wasn't delivered over to death. I didn't get bugged out. You know I still have my faith. I still believe in the gospel. I'm still enduring. I'm still here. You know, and now ultimately it 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 builds your hope in the Lord. OK, and while you're going through all these things, you got to continuously what pray to the Lord and you got to think. All right. Uh, uh, about the about the mercy and the goodness of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and speak those things. So if you go through something, you don't say, oh, no, hey, hey, man, the Lord ain't dealing with me, because if you say that <laughs> power, uh, the power of life and death is in the tongue. That means that came from somewhere. All right. That's why it says be slow to speak. Because if you were hastily just saying that, those words can be used to be manifested, all right? These evil spirits can use those words to be manifested, then what? Then they then they start to, you know, uh, uh, work on your mind. And then that's, the, that's what you start to own, constantly meditate on and think about to the point where you do become bugged out. You do fall out the truth. You do lose your hope, all right? And that's, and that's why in, uh, prayer, meditation... Okay, is important. This is our Proverbs, so like uh, Psalms. You know, this is a prayer. Uh, you know, I mentioned this uh, a couple of years back, but this is a prayer that you know I always pray because this is important, man. All right, it says um, Prover uh, Psalms nineteen verse thirteen. Start at thirteen. It says, "Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins, 
okay? Those presumptuous sins, meaning things that you are willingly doing, all right? The things that you are, are, are um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, presumptuously, I can't think of the, another word, but, you know, basically things that you are willfully uh, 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 looking to, to uh, sinning that you are looking towards doing, man. Because there's some sins that you may not, you don't think about doing, you just end up happening to do them. And then once they actually, you know, once you actually realize that you did them, you become sorrowful and you repent. But to have a mind to presumptuously uh, sin, that really means that you you got a wicked cognitation. All right. It says, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Verse 14 is the uh, point. So let the words of my mouth. OK, let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart, a.k.a. my mind, be acceptable in thy sight, O, o Yahweh, my strength and my redeemer. So the words of our mouth, you want them to be acceptable in the in the um, in the eyes, in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. OK, let's get this uh, another scripture. Um, so like, yeah, yeah, I'm just going off the top. OK, and that ultimately comes from, you know, um, <laughs> the Lord, man. All right. The scriptures talks about here, the right here, um, Proverbs 16 and one, it says the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. OK, so the preparations of your of, of your of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So that's why praying unto the Lord that the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable so that you can be uh, um, so that you can be, you know, away from evil. All right. Hey, what did the Lord's prayer lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from all evil? You pray those things and you speak those words. Guess what ends up happening? You don't get you don't uh, uh, be led into temptation. All right, and then the, and then and then and the temptation or the trial that you do have, as it is written, that the Lord gives you a way to escape out of those things, because those trials and those and those sufferings or those tribulation ultimately is to increase your hope, increase your faith. But you got people who go through the sufferings and trials, but they don't pray, they don't meditate, uh, you know, in righteousness. All right, they look to themselves, they look to the universe. So when they go through these things, they become even more wicked. That's why it says what. That a just man fall of seven times, but he, but what rises up again? Because when he when he falls, he doesn't think negatively. All right, he doesn't look to the to the creature. He looks to the creator. All right, and he speaks, you know, uh, life. He speaks for forgiveness. He speaks for endurance. All right, the spiritual things, man. Because these people, you know, that do that whole manifestation affirmations and <laughs> all of that. They're what are they looking for? What are they manifesting? I right, manifest that I'm gonna, you know, get a six-figure uh, 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 job this year. I manifest that I'm gonna find a a uh, find love. I manifest that I'm going to, you know, get a get a house. All things carnally, man. And that's why James, going back to that, James says um, this. James chapter one, just like it. James chapter four, verse three. It says, "Ye ask and receive not." And how do you ask? You ask by, by way of your tongue, okay? The ability to speak, which is what the Lord gave unto mankind. And for us, that's in his truth. We got to use that, you know, for, for good. You got to use that for the um for righteousness, all right? It says, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. So that's really what all that manifestation and affirmation that these people you know and especially our women be into man they're just doing that to to uh consume it upon their lust but us that's in this knowledge we can ask okay uh and, and rightly for all right for spiritual things as yahweh Shah said seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness and 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 um and all these things shall be added unto thee so when you ask when we ask about these things correctly all right. The Lord will grant them to us, man. And and that goes into what? Asking about things that pertain unto the uh, kingdom of heaven, man. 
Okay, asking for more faith, asking for more endurance, patience, temperance, charity. All right, now, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, uh, the understanding of the scriptures. You ask these things, and they in in Bahashim Yahawashai. Okay, you ask these things to Yahweh Bahashim Yahawashai, Bahashim Rakakudash, and guess what happens? The Lord will grant that grant that request. Okay, but it starts with the tongue, man. And I'm gonna um, close it. You know this 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 actual uh, uh, lesson. You know through the Spirit, <laughs> it uh, actually went somewhere that I wasn't expecting. But regardless, let me get this because what I what I was uh, meditating on was the ability to, you know, be able to um, use your tongue wisely in a sense of getting out of certain situations. Okay. All right. Uh, um, not being, not being, you know, rash with your tongue, but regardless, this right here is, is still edification, but I wanted to bring this out. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse one, it says a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. And that's something that you should, should be applying to your own life. Okay. Not every, not every time. And really, the majority of times when you respond uh, softly, when you actually think about your response and you use words, you know, uh, words of wisdom in your response, it can turn away somebody that is wrathful towards you. You know, somebody coming at you barking and you, you know, you come with a meek and humble spirit. And this is something that, you know, we all got to work on, man, me, myself. Okay. But, you know, uh, uh, having that ability to to use a soft answer because in this in the in the man's mind all right in this flesh somebody barking at you especially as a man <laughs> okay as a lion you want to what you want to rile back you want to roll back but what is better to do in, in applying the applying these words okay these words of wisdom these dark sayings okay these parables you apply that it actually benefits you to be able to have a soft response, have a soft answer back. And that doesn't make you, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, what's the word? Soft. That doesn't make you a simp. That doesn't make you, you know, uh, uh, B-I-T-C-H, okay? I'm trying to not to, you know, uh, uh, use vulgar <laughs> language, okay? But ultimately, you're using that for your advantage. You think about that, uh, you know, at your at your job, all right? If you get into a situation, you know, at, at a grocery store, you get a situation, you know, let's say you get into a fender bender, somebody's barking at you, okay? You might not know what that, and you start to rile back, you might not know what that person has in his, you know, in his vehicle, especially in the times that we're in now, okay? Person can have a gun, you bark back, they go to the car and shoot you. You've been, you see it happening more and more, you know, uh, uh, um, in this day and age, man, because iniquity is abounding, the love of many shall wax cold, okay? You get into a situation, you get pulled over by the cops, Hey, the Lord talked about agree with that adversary quickly. How do you agree with them? Hey, with your mouth. So your tongue is very, very powerful, man. All right? And you got to learn how to tame it. And that's speaking to you men and you women, man. Learn how to tame your, your, your tongue. Because really, it just only benefits you. It benefits you in the long run. So, you know, I'm going to end it there, Lord willing. Um, Actually, let me read the second uh, verse. It says, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge or right. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. You see? So the tongue of the wise, they use the knowledge, and especially the knowledge that we have is the highest knowledge. You want to use that the right way, man. Okay? Use it the right way. Apply it the right way in your in your day-to-day. -day. And that also goes into, first and foremost, praying unto the Lord that he gives you the correct uh, 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 mind, right? And then the ability to interpret your cognitations the correct way. You see? So, uh, you know, with that, Lord willingness was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakakudash. So, next time, Shalom.